What's up everybody? Jim from Climate Viewer here with some crazy weather, some chemtrails, a uh, uranium mine on fire, and a cloud making rocket. So <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this quick and I know it won't be so let me do it pretty quick. First we got the NASA J2X doghouse cloud, cloud forming rocket. I've known about this for a long time and today when somebody called me about all the chemtrails going on I thought you know why not come out here? Let me turn this MODIS off real quick. It's under satellite. MODIS visible. That's where I'm getting that from. And apparently my button got moved. Because it's right here. I just put this on the map. Um, if you control click the map you can add your own icon. So let's say over here it'll tell you propellant boulevard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Or what they're propelling. Anyway, these are channels to feed water to. Um, is this a second rocket? I'll be darned. That looks like it could be a second one there. Let's uh, let's mark that one. I didn't expect this. Sorry, guys. Road six, and then over here you have road four. Uh, I got links to two videos, just so you can see. Yeah, how about that? Um, anyway, links are in the button there. Pretty cool. So I just want to kind of keep an eye on this thing. Kind of creeps me out. Very heavy, heavy potential to do some harm with something like that if someone who were nefarious were to get a hold of it. Anyway, then over here to um, the uranium fire, we have, um, I'm going to mention this on... Uh, any news and uh, a couple others. You know, you can pop over here. Massive blaze burns through former uranium site in U.S. Idaho official. There may be minor increase in radioactivity levels. Let's check that real quick. We're at 59. I saw it at like 60, 60 earlier. Um, it's been fluctuating. That doesn't seem extremely high, but we're talking about Idaho over here. Um, as you can clearly see, there are no radiation uh, detectors. Let me make sure which way the wind's going. Actually, if if that's spreading, it's going to be just kind of sitting around there right now. So um, we have no detectors in the area, guys. So keep an eye out. If, if anybody in the area has a Geiger counter and can get us a reading, it would be great. Um, and then I'm going to show the fires real quick. So everybody can see it. And Modus. Um, picture looks kind of smoldery, I'd say. But I have all this cloud stuff on right now, too. Um, I don't see anything just outrageously burning like the, the fires I saw the other week. But um, anyway, keep an eye on this, guys. Let me know if you hear anything crazy. Um, I saw Dutch, uh, Dutch Sense put out a video earlier saying that he was getting nailed by some crazy weather, so I, I wanted to look into it. I heard some lightning popping off in the background, so let's do a quick little weather check. Let me turn these earthquakes off, by the way. That's kind of blocking up the screen. Okay, um, this is the animated cloud map under weather. You go clouds, GE, that's Google Earth, clouds animated. I got this. Anyway, I got this out of their uh, out of the actual program by listening to their service. But anyway, you can drag the time slider and see the progression. Everything seems to be broken up here, and then it gets compressed. Look at that! Just a big bloom out of nowhere, right there. Boy, they're trying to nail you today, uh, Dutch. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. But um, right about here, they match up. So. What, what I have underneath is the Aqua Modus. Um, it's my favorite. I'm, until I can find a better one, somebody please give me better um, uh, satellite or more. Any more links you can give me, please give them to me. But um, Aqua Modus is the background semi live image. If you do the cloud map and you get it to right about here, you can see they line up. So that tells us that our Aqua Modus image is from 925. 
2012 at 1.39 p.m. Okay, and that's going to be important later because I'm going to talk about some of these chemtrails we're seeing down here. Um, moving on. At the end here, look at this. I mean, this is just interesting. Now, what I'm about to do after this, I haven't even previewed it. So I want to do this with you. Maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe I'll be bored. But I have a feeling this may look pretty crazy. Yeah, that's just weird. It just kind of blooms up there. See that? Guys? Well, let you know, since everybody likes to talk about next rads, let's. I went and uh, found all of the next rad radars in America, plus a couple you've never. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Yeah, let me turn the aqua off. Yeah, that's pretty nasty looking right now. And let's move. Got what appears to be a beam there, pencil beam. Searchlight mode, also it's known as, could possibly be an anomaly. Somebody look into that. Avoid on that. I don't see anything else there. Let me. I'm trying to do this quickly. I don't want to waste too much time on this. Some nice scatter out here. By the way, um, for those who are wondering, the green dots are next rats. All right. I got links to them. Um, this stuff will not work. Uh, you may be able to like copy and paste it over there. I'll I'll come out with a tutorial on that later. Um, the green ones are next rats. The red are joint surveillance system or the Federal Aviation Long Range Radar System. Um, these are for tracking planes. And the yellow ones are TDWR, or Terminal Doppler Weather Radar. Um, these are short, wing, uh, short range Doppler radars that are very highly, highly accurate to also include um, downdraft and specific stuff for landing. So the difference being that these radars can point at the ground. Uh, they want to be able to see what the wind is right along the surface so that when a plane lands they can um, they can you know get all that data so big difference um, green ones long range yellow ones short range red ones also can be used for weather um, information I did verify that and blue ones are the um, integrated ocean observing system and they're Doppler radars that track the ocean currents and temperatures off the coast now, just a quick um, comment that's got to drive dolphins crazy. I mean, think about how all that sound, you know. I mean, what does that do to the wildlife? All those chirps and pulses of electromagnetic energy being shot into the coastlines. I mean, really? Do we really need to know that much? Um, so let's do an animated version of this. I'm going to turn off the next red. We're going to go up here to the Google Earth animated one. Bring that up. Here we go. Pretty nasty. Um, yeah, so guys, look out over here. Um, you're going to get nailed uh, with some pretty nasty storms. Let's look at the current weather alerts. Quite a few. It's going to be very ugly through here, obviously. We got hail over here. Um, we have a tornado, Hoylton, Illinois, and tornadoes in, uh, wow, all across Illinois. Um, I don't have a path or anything on these. I hope these got, these. this is, what's the, what's the time on this? I don't see a time. 16.35. And bring up the lightning real quick. Just take a quick look at that. And yeah, that is a lot of lightning around St. Louis. Big pops of lightning. All along the storm and um what else do we have? We can look at the um the wind currently. Now the way these barbs work uh, the dot is the direction it's going. The things off the side indicate um, the speed. So 
the wind is coming this way and then it's coming down this way yeah, and we can look at the wind map this confirms it it seems to be uh, everything's pulling from the south and crunching in the middle <laughs> right about where Dutch is <laughs> and uh, it's gonna move up towards Chicago it looks like in Columbus Ohio so um, I'm not a weatherman but uh, I'd be prepared Now, lastly, let's check out these chemtrails. Yep, we have a lot of flights again today as usual. Nothing really stands out today, just I got a call from a friend and uh, a couple of my tweeters out there were saying that there's some heavy chemtrailing going on over Dallas-Fort Worth. As we saw earlier, this was definitely over Dallas earlier. Here's one really substantial one. Two more here I'm seeing. Pretty thick lines. Heavy, persistent contrails, or whatever you want to call them, but they're thick and they're nasty. And just, just I mean, as a layperson, this all looks completely different than this. And I know it's warmer down here than it is up here, but this stuff, this whole section, just looks icky. And uh, that's my technical term for it. Anyway, this is uh, Jim Lee from Climate Viewer uh, telling you, uh, come have fun and uh, fear not. There's nothing to fear. Um, inform yourself, and uh, knowing is half the battle. Last thing, I completely forgot about it. Um, there was a question on my last video thread where somebody was asking about our commercial airlines or the Air Force or who's doing the chemtrailing, what are they doing it for. Now, there's all kind of conspiracies out there, but the reason why I even am leery of the whole thing is because of things like this. Planes were yeah, okay. Okay, and you can watch this video. It's I reposted it um, on my YouTube feed. And then finally, everybody knows about the Weather 2025 um, uh, document out there, but this is one I didn't even know about, and I just recently came across it. Operational defenses through weather control in 2030. Here's a, here's a different possibility. Could all the chemtrails and massive covering of the sky have to do with all the, the laser weapons and spy satellite stuff that's out there? The United States needs to incorporate defense against direct energy weapons with the same intensity used to develop anti-ballistic missile defenses. One of the major drawbacks to optical or directed energy systems is the inability to penetrate clouds or dense fog. Advances in technology are beginning to bring weather phenomena under our control. Greatly, incre yeah. Greatly increased computing power and micronized delivery systems will allow us to create specific perturba perturbations in the local atmospheric conditions. These perturbations allow the immediate and lasting ability to create localized fog or stratus cloud formations shielding critical assets against attack from energy based weapons the future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations to defeat direct energy weapons and optically targeted attacks against the united states assets the solution <laughs> hold on to your pants people the solution the weather control problem <laughs> nice I type it. the solution the weather control problem involves network miniature balloons feeding and receiving data from a four-dimensional 40 barrier computer model through a sensor and actor network so what they're saying is they're gonna spatially 
test everything, time, space, um, temperatures, and all that kind of stuff, and then feed it into a, a model, a computer that will model the whole atmosphere in 4D. Um, a network of diamond-walled balloons enters the area to be changed and then both measures and affects localized temperature and vapor content. This system effectively shortens the control loop of an atmospheric system to the point that it can be managed. The capabilities in diamond wall balloons are based on future of nanotechnology. Now, the fact that they want to do it with diamond shaped diamond wall balloons in the future, that's great. But what they do recognize here is that they're scared of the you know, stuff in the space and they want to be able to shield areas from view from satellites so they would like to be able to just create fog or create a dense cover real quick for for that reason there are many other reasons but um, I just thought this was really interesting check it out people I'll put all the links in the video